This is the bicycle top level assembly video part one. This is the final project for the semester and in this project we will finally take all of the bicycle related parts that we created and put them together to create the top level assembly of the bicycle. Once we do that we will create a two sheet drawing. The first sheet will show three orthographic views of the drawing using third angle projection and one isometric view in shaded mode. The second sheet will show just the frame exploded with a bill of materials and balloons pointing to each of the components in the frame. In addition to this, there will be a little bit of annotation added to each sheet of the drawing. We've created a large number of parts during the semester. Some were tutorials, some were projects, but that still isn't quite enough parts to actually make a completed bicycle assembly. This chart shows parts that you created as tutorials in blue, parts that you created as projects in red, and finally in green, parts that will be handed to you to supplement the rest of the bicycle assembly. Just going over that briefly, the projects that we've built are the saddle, the frame, the fork, and the rear and front wheel assembly. Tutorials included the bottle cage, stem, handlebar grip, the handlebars themselves, downloading some screws from the internet, and the tire that goes on the wheels. The parts that are being supplied to you are the seat clamp, which holds the seat onto the seat post, the seat post itself, and the seat post clamp, which tightens the seat post in the seat tube. You will also be supplied with the chain and the crank and pedal and bottom bracket assembly. You can insert this into the top level assembly of your bicycle as one complete sub-assembly and do not have to rebuild this assembly yourself. The last part will be the bearing cap which sits right on top of the head tube. Getting back to our bicycle assembly, we will be making two configurations. The default will have a fork which is fixed in place and cannot be rotated. We will also be adding a configuration that allows the fork to rotate freely and to have all the other parts attached to it rotate with it. This is done by suppressing one of the mates. So you see here, if I move the fork or the handlebars, all of the parts connected to the fork and handlebars move along with it, just like on a real bike. The nice thing about this is it gives you the freedom to create some interesting views if you are going to be making a render. In both configurations, you will be assembling the wheels and the crank in such a way that you can rotate them, but they are still mated to the dropout slots of the fork and the rear of the frame. This again gives you a little bit of freedom when you're trying to create some interesting viewpoints. You will also mate the crank in such a way that that can be rotated as well. This gives you the freedom if you're making a render from a particular viewpoint and the crank is prominent in that viewpoint to rotate the crank as you please to improve the appearance in the render. So let's get started with a new assembly file. I've closed all my other files, so right now there's nothing in the open documents box. The first thing I want to insert is not my frame, but actually my frame geometry. So browsing to my assembly file, I'll go down to my bike geometry file, open, and just click on the green check mark here. Now you might think that this is an odd thing to put into the assembly because this file was already used multiple times to create the frame and the fork. It seems like there should be no reason now to be putting it into the assembly as well. However, the reason for this is it provides us a few convenient features for mating later on that would make mating certain things a little bit awkward. For example, we will later on be putting the chain, of course, into the assembly. The chain has to be on a certain plane so that it is centered up with the sprocket and the front chain ring. This geometry file contains a convenient plane for aligning the chain to the sprocket and chain ring. 
It also provides a convenient place for locating the rear wheel. You might think that the rear wheel is supposed to go down to the bottom of the dropout slot, but on most bikes the axle does not center with the bottom of the slot. This allows a little bit of latitude to move the wheel back and forth to keep the chain tight. So the center of our wheel is going to be going here, not here. You can also use this geometry file for some other convenient mates, such as locating the height of the seat or the front nose of the seat, or even locating the axis for the steering tube on the fork. The next step now is to add the frame. And what we want to do is add the welded version of the frame, not the one that's the explodable assembly. It's the welded one that has all the fillets that simulate welds and includes any graphics you put on the frame. So insert components, browse, I'm going to my welded frame and I want the origin of the welded frame to correspond to the origin of my assembly. So I just hit my green check mark. And there's my frame sitting in its familiar spot with respect to the geometry file. The next obvious step is inserting the fork. And you might be tempted to hit the green check mark on this, but if we do, the fork will be in the correct spot, as you see here, but we won't be able to pivot it. So instead, drag it out somewhere in a random spot and just drop it into place and make sure that it is not fixed. So you should see a minus sign here. Now we can start adding some mates to the fork. We can mate the steering tube cylinder to the inside cylinder of the head tube, provided that you do have a cylindrical surface, or you can mate this cylinder to this line in the geometry file. I will mate it to this line here. So mate, select the cylinder, the steering tube, select this line in the geometry file, and that brings that in line. Now we want the top of the crown to mate with the bottom of the head tube. So we can perform the mate between the crown and the head tube, or we can just mate the crown with this line that's in the geometry file. Both should give us the same result. So I will click on this surface here, this line in the geometry file here, and that is mated. Now you notice that this is off axis, so somewhere I made a mistake. So let's go back to that first mate that I made. Here is my fork in the feature tree. I'll open that up, go to the mates folder for the fork, and I see that I accidentally made a coincident relation instead of a concentric. So I will edit that mate. Here we see the coincident. I will change this to concentric, and that pulls the fork on center with the head tube. That wasn't planned, by the way. So the fork is in its proper position, but I can grab it now and I can rotate this back and forth. So to prevent that from rotating back and forth, I will add one more mate, which is to mate the front plane of the fork with the front plane of the assembly. So selecting mates, selecting the front plane of the fork and the front plane of the assembly, we see that rotates into place and now the fork is straight. This is the orientation we want for the default, and as long as this mate is unsuppressed, we will not be able to rotate the fork. What I'm going to do is give this mate a name. So I can click on this mate just like any other feature. Click F2 to rename it, or if I just hover over it long enough, it goes into rename mode. And I will name this mate Suppress to Pivot Fork. That will remind me that this is a critical mate that needs to be suppressed in our second configuration. Now what I might want to do is actually purposely suppress this now so that when I make the other mates to the fork, I will remember not to mate some of those items to the assembly, but to the fork. So I will just temporarily suppress this and rotate the fork just a little bit. 
The next step is bringing in the rear wheel. And we can't mate that to the origin either because it'll put it here rather than back here. So insert components, browse, and we go to our rear wheel assembly, which I have right now in a different file, looking for that tire wheel assembly, open, and I'll drag this to the approximate location. And you see, because I have my sketches on, that I see a million layout sketches located in my wheel. And that's because every spoke that's patterned in here has the sketches turned on. What I should have done was gone back and hidden all these before starting this process. So I'm going to go do that and then come back and finish this up. So you've seen all these messy sketches disappearing. What you didn't see was me stopping the video while I went into each of these parts and hid those sketches, which took me a few minutes to do. But I recommend you go and do that before you start this process so that you have as uncluttered a view as you can when you are making your mates. Now the front plane of the wheel can be aligned with the front plane of the assembly. So we will start there. And so that I don't have to bother with my feature tree popping up over here and selecting from it and obscuring my view, what it can always do is hold my control key down and it will select the front plane of the wheel assembly in my feature tree, scroll up to the top, select the front plane of my assembly, and then say mate. That will give me a coincident mate and I'll hit the check mark. Now I've still got my mate box open and I've manipulated the window to give me a little bit more room here for my pop-up feature tree, so I'll go ahead and try using that. What I want to do is take the axis in the rear wheel assembly and mate it with this intersection in my geometry file where the seat stay and the chain stay intersect. That's where the center of the wheel is supposed to go. So pulling down my feature tree over here, I will first collapse the fork portion of the feature tree, open up the wheel assembly, and then I see here in the wheel assembly the axis that I want to align. So I will click on that, see the axis highlighting, then I will zoom in to this intersection here, and the second click will be this point here in the geometry file. That creates a coincident and drags the wheel down to be on center with this intersection. Now I can click the green check mark. So this looks great until we suddenly realize that we've got the front wheel on the rear. But remember, this is a two configuration assembly. So all we have to do is right click on this wheel assembly, go to properties, and then change the configuration from front wheel to rear wheel. Okay, let me hide everything. When we zoom in, we see that we in fact now have the sprocket and the lock ring, which tells us that this is the rear wheel assembly. Now I can insert my front wheel, which is actually the same part as my rear wheel. So I can reinsert the front wheel, or I can just click on the rear wheel, control C for copy, and control V for paste. And that will make a copy of that part. So I will highlight that in the feature tree, move component, and just drag the second copy of the wheel over here. But of course, this is the rear configuration of the wheel because it was copied from this wheel here. So I right click, properties, and I change this back to the front wheel configuration. Now we see the sprocket has disappeared. What we need to do is get the axis of this front wheel concentric to the curved surface of the dropout slot. And we want the front plane of the wheel to be coincident with the front plane of the fork. That way, if we turn the fork, the wheel will turn with it. We don't want the front plane of the wheel coincident with the front plane of the assembly, because if we do that, we can't turn the fork. So let's start here. 
we again have this axis running through our assembly. I will just open this up here and I will just pre-select the items that I want to mate. So I'll hold down my control key, click on the axis in the wheel assembly. You see it highlight here. And then I will zoom in onto the fork while still holding control. Click on this surface of the dropout slot. Now hit mate. And let's not make the same mistake we made before. We'll take it out of coincident, turn it to concentric, and we bring that axle right in alignment with the dropout. Now we see that this is not centered up on the fork. And this is where we have to make the mate with the front plane of the fork. So while I've still got my mate box open, I'll open up my feature tree in the graphics area here, scroll down, and select the front plane of the wheel assembly. Then I'll collapse that part of the feature tree and then open up the feature tree for the fork and select the front plane for the fork. That will default to a coincident and hit the check mark and finish that. Now we should see that if I rotate the fork, the wheel rotates with it. The next step is the crank subassembly. So again, inserting components, browse, and looking for the subassembly for the crank. This is going to be one of the components that has been supplied that you don't have to make. So here's my crank with bottom bracket. Click on that, open. And here's the entire crank with the pedals. This was built in a slightly different orientation from the bicycles. You see that even though we're looking at the side of the bicycle, we're looking at the crank head on. So I'll just drop this in place without mating it. Here's our crank. And then I will highlight that and use rotate component to just get this in the approximate proper orientation. Escape. I want to make an axis that passes through the crank, go through the center of the bottom bracket. And since the center of the bottom bracket is also where the origin is, I can actually use the origin as my mating feature. Opening up the crank in my feature tree, Here's the axis that passes through it. We'll hold my control down since I've got this selected. I will select the origin of the assembly as well. As you see that highlighting, mate, and that brings the crank into the right position. Now what we need to do is get the crank. Let me hide my geometry file for a moment. We need to get the crank properly centered up and oriented with the front plane of the assembly. It turns out that the crank right plane is the plane that needs to be mated with the front plane of the assembly. So let's hold our control key down, click on the right plane of the crank, the front plane of the assembly, mate, and you see that brings it in line. If you don't like having the foot straps in your crank assembly, you can open each of the files for the pedals, which includes the straps and toe clips as separate bodies, and just delete those bodies. So I'll just right click on this part, open part, and here we see that there are five bodies in this part. The first and second bodies are the strap and the toe clip, and you can always just add a delete body feature to get rid of these. The next part I would normally add would be the chain, but I have a separate video just for that because you need to adjust the length of the chain before inserting it, so that's a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to move on instead to the bottle cage, which was one of our tutorial parts. So insert component, browse, and I will go to my tutorial parts here, look for my bottle cage, open, and just drag this into the approximate correct location. What I want to do is make the bottom of this bracket mated to one or the other of these mounting bosses on the down tube. 
just rotate so I can see that surface. Holding my control key, I'll just click on this surface here and this surface here, mate. And that brings the two in alignment, but of course we have a lot more mates to do here. Now what I can do is click on the cylindrical hole in the mounting bracket of the bottle cage and this threaded hole in the mounting boss. And that brings that into alignment. What you can try to do also is another mate between this hole and this hole, which might cause a mate error if the distance between the holes in the bracket and the holes in the mounting bosses are not perfectly the same. Clicking here and here, concentric, it looks like I had no problem there. If for some odd reason you have an error, you can always make the concentric mate for this bottom hole and then mate the front plane of the bottle cage with the front plane of the bike assembly. So I think this is going to be a good place to stop part number one. We've got all of our large components mated up to the frame. And in the next video, we will focus on mating up all of the seat related components and all of the handlebar and stem related components.